Hello all and welcome to Wow Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are working on this gorgeous agroni square swatch swatch number eight for the swatch blanket of 2021. So if you are joining us new and you would like to make our blanket we are up to swatch eight. I will leave a link to the playlist in the description box down below, the very first link you come to, and that will be our swatch playlist. You can head over and make all of the swatches and um, complete eight, or you can complete eight first and then head over and make all the swatches. However, if you just want to do a granny square, by all means, just do the granny square. I tell you where to stop um, before this row this little final row so if you wanted to continue to do the granny square to make a granny square blanket by all means you can keep going otherwise the rest of us are going to go ahead and prepare our square for the swatch blanket yay get excited now you're probably looking at this thinking wait a minute that final row does not look like normal double crochet it's not it is a row of single crochets now the reason being and I'll tell you this now so that you know for this tutorial you will need your measuring tape because we need to measure all our swatches are measuring between oh that's too far away let me do that for a minute they're all measuring between um, 20 centimeters or eight inches to 20 centimeters eight inches now I found that when I got to the white or cream row if you will if I did another row of double crochets they would come right out here and it'll be right up to nearly nine inches so it'd be too much for me so I did a final row in single crochets so just measure your rows as you go when you get to your cream measure your rows if you find that it's already eight don't bother doing the final row but I actually like the final row. It kind of closes it up and makes it gorgeous. Plus, it's allowing me to use the four colours that we have chosen here twice. So we've gone gold, purple, cream, blue, gold, purple, cream, blue. All right, I hope this is all making sense. Now, um, it is the cream one. And it's not really a gold. It's like a pumpkin. It's, it's called pumpkin, but it is gold if you look at it. Um, and then you've got your purple yes and then you've got your aqua all right it's blue aqua whatever you want to call it now this yarn is called spot saver usa style it calls for a five millimeter hook right there which we are using a five millimeter hook now if you're wondering what that is overseas it's a number four or an aran weight okay it is acrylic yarn 100% acrylic yarn. I've got your threads everywhere here, don't mind that. You will also need your uh, sewing darning needle, you will need your scissors, you will need your stitch marker if that's what you want to use. Now I use this darning needle, it doesn't really matter. Oh, let me get a close up there so you can see. It doesn't really matter what you have. I like this one because it kind of points up there, but you can use any darning needle that you like. All right, so in reference to our other squares, if you're wanting to see those other squares, um, join us on our lives 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoon or 11, 10 a.m. I mean, nearly said 11, <laughs> Saturday mornings. Uh, and that's every week. That's Melbourne, Australia time, by the way. And that's every week, okay? So you'll be able to see some of the other squares that we have already completed. Or you can go through the playlist, which is that link down below, the very first link you see. In the meantime, I'm not going to talk anymore. I'm just going to let you get started making your gorgeous granny square swatch. Swatch number eight. Good luck, guys. Alrighty guys, we're going to start off with a quick slip knot, just grabbing the tail end of your yarn, wrapping it around your finger once, twice, holding it there and holding it down there. And leave yourself a nice tail because you're going to weave that in later. Grabbing your back loop, passing it halfway over your finger, hold it there. Grab the other loop, passing it all the way over, get your hook, pop it in that loop there and give everything a tug. Alright, now we are going to start off by chaining up five and a chain is yarn over your hook and pull it through to the loop on your hook once yarn over twice yarn over three times yarn over four yarn over five all right ordinarily i would have done three um, but for the purpose of this tutorial we're going to do five just so that um, those of you who are new can actually find that very first stitch. Very first stitch is over here. You're going to grab your hook, 
pop it in that first stitch like so. Pull a loop through that stitch, tugging your work down there with your finger, your thumb, whatever you've got available there, tugging it down, still with the same loop, pull it through to the loop on your hook and you form that center right there. Now you're going to chain three, you're going to hold on to everything, chain three, one, two, and three. Now what we're going to do is put a double crochet in there and a double crochet is your yarn over your hook, pop it in the space that you made right there in that space, pull up a loop. Now you have one, two, three loops, yarn over, pull through two, two loops left, yarn over, pull through another two, hold it there and grab a stitch marker. So we grab our stitch marker, just going to lift up this loop a little bit just so I can show you where to put your stitch marker. This is your first round. So we just finished completing that stitch right there. Right next to it is two loops of the three chains that we just did. Okay, pop your stitch marker in those two loops. This is a stitch we just made, so we won't worry about that. We're going to pop it in that first two loops there. It's actually a stitch, if you will. All right, pop your hook back in. Okay, now in this round and every other round, these chain threes that you just did will classify as one double crochet. So you've got the one, you've got the two, now you need to do another double crochet. And you're crocheting over your tail end as well. So yarn over your hook in the space, pull a loop through, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the last two. All right, so what I'm going to do is going to get nice and close just for this next two sets so you can see what we're doing. Okay, so you've done your three double crochets, you're chaining one and two and that's forming your corner. You're going to do another three double crochets here. So yarn over your hook in the space, pull a loop through, yarn over, two, yarn over, Two. Now if you don't want to crochet over your tail end, you don't have to. Either way, we're still going to weave it in again as well. So yarn over, second double crochet. Two, and two. Yarn over, third double crochet. Two, and two. And now you're going to chain two. One, and two. You're going to do that three double crochet set again. Yarn over, one, yarn over, two, yarn over, three, and then you chain one and two. All right, so what you have so far is that your three double crochets, chain two, first corner, three double crochets, chain two, second corner, three double crochets, chain two third corner and now we're going to do three double crochets again one two three and now we're going to do our final corner one and two but we actually need to join our work so we're going to slip stitch in that stitch marker which is why I asked you to put the stitch marker there and not in the very first double crochet that we did after the chains. So you're just going to pop your hook in that stitch of your stitch marker. That might be a tight stitch, okay, that's normal. All right, just grab a loop, pull it through, okay, and pull it through to the loop on your hook. You've closed up your square. And not only have you closed up your square, we're going to change color. So. Pull a loop through, giving it a cut, okay, easy, all right, that is easy, you will need your gold again later, but for now, we're going to change to purple, I don't like to start off in a corner where I ended off with, okay, I like to start off in that very first corner, because I come across here and then I bring that over and crochet over it. It's a little bit awkward if you are new to crochet and you don't want to do that just leave your tail end and weave it in later which I show you anyway so we just you know I do it twice I weave it in as well there you go <laughs> so I'm going to start in that very first corner just before it 
Now where we start, remember how we were working, we put our slip stitch through there and we cast off. We're still staying on that side. Don't turn it over where it's all bubbled and your little tail end is at the back. We're still staying on that side. Pop your hook in that very first corner that you are in, grabbing uh, your, if I can find the beginning, the tail end of your purple. Oh, I shouldn't have brought that up, should have left it down, yeah? Grabbing your tail end and just popping it around your hook, like so, pulling it through. Now you've got a little bit of a tail there, just pass it forward for a minute because we're going to, I've just kind of locked that, it's actually knotted if you think about it. And then we're going to do a normal chain one, two and three. Hold it there. This is where you're going to pop your stitch mark. A little bit difficult to see with the purple, but there you go. And you're popping it through the two loops right there, two loops on top and one loop on the bottom. And that's where you're going to slip stitch at the end of this round. All right, so now we're going to continue with our double crochets and you need two double crochets here. Yarn over your hook in the space and over your tail. You're working over the tail. One. You can let go of your tail now because it's already tucked in. Okay. But still keep going over it. And two. I find it easier to hold the tail until, it's, until we're finished anyway. All right, so there's your chains. Remember, acts as a double crochet in the first stitch there. So you're chaining one and two, and you're popping three double crochets in that corner. So yarn over your hook and do your three double crochets. Okay. All right, now just grab your tail end there, just pop it at the back. Now what we're going to do is jump into this corner and do three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, right in that corner. But yours truly said before that I like to weave in that tail end right there. So I grab it with the back of my fingers there. You don't have to if you're finding this awkward. Yarn over my hook and I start the double crochet with still holding that gold tail. Start it and drop it. Once you've got that loop pulled through, you can drop it. Then you just do one two see i'm crocheting over the tail without holding it now and three chain one and two because we're forming our corner we're popping another three in there going right over that knot no one's ever going to see it and no one knows exactly where you started and ended on that first round all right from here we're going to jump straight into that very next corner Okay, so what you've done, let me show you exactly what you've done. You've formed one corner and you've formed two corners, okay? Now yarn over your hook, jump straight into that corner and do what I call a double cluster set. Three, two, three. Three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Off you go. One, two, three, chain two, one and two. Is that too close guys? Sorry, bring that down a bit. And then three double crochets again in the same corner. Two and three. Three, two, three in your very next corner go. Double cluster set. Start using the crochet jargon when it comes to my patterns, because I use that a lot on the written pattern. So once they start going up on the website, you're going to see a lot of that crochet jargon. One and two, and three double crochets. Jargon, language, if you will, crochet language, whatever you want to call it, two and three. All right, what we have here is the square, and you're thinking it's not joined yet. No, we're going to slip stitch that in a minute to join it. But that's what you have. So let's slip stitch it. All right, bring that up. And there's your stitch marker. If you're anything like me and you're struggling to see the stitch because it's purple, I'm going to take that out for you. But that's where you slip stitch into, that stitch marker. And if that doesn't help you, you just go to the first loop there and back loop there. So it's a front loop and a back loop that you're slip stitching into, if that helps. Grabbing your thread. Pull the loop through that stitch. 
tight stitch there and pull it through to the loop on your hook and guess what you're going to cast this thread off too so pull up a loop and then you work a cut oops I just threw everything everywhere just now <laughs> you didn't see that <laughs> it was all off there let's move it all over so I don't make a mess so there's your square with your purple pretty coolio now we're going to grab the cream 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 and this is where the row changes a little bit all right but it's not completely difficult it just changes a little bit all right so now all right let me get a nice close and remember how i said i don't like to start where i've left a thread and i start usually in the corner before and that's exactly what i'm going to do here popping your hook in your corner grabbing your new color which i grabbed the cream okay pull a loop through and just pull your little tail end forward just so we can lock it all into place Pulling that up there so you can have a look see oh threads are everywhere now all right so in here you're going to chain three one two three and you're an expert at chaining now so try to do that very top stitch a little tiny not too much but a little tiny bit loose less tight than the rest of your work if that helps see that's that's much better that stitch there i can see the gap through it because that's the one we're going to slip stitch into at the end of the round okay all right so remember this counts as a stitch a double crochet stitch so that's one just grabbing your tail because you're going to work over that and do two double crochets one and two because your chains will act as your third one all right so from here we are going to chain two to finish off the corner one and two do our three double crochets to finish off that corner that is the way you're going to start every round by doing your chain two i'm lying let's try chain three <laughs> wake up mary you're going to do your chain three you're going to do your two double crochets chain two and three double crochets that's how you start every round from now on well from the very beginning but that's how you start from now on all right grabbing that little cream end popping it at the back all right so from here we now initially have in this round spaces just before our corner see these spaces right there one two three and four so we have our four spaces in that space you're going to put what i call uh, one cluster set which is just three double crochets now i'm actually going to crochet over the tail end there yarn over the hook in the space and i'm doing three double crochets so go ahead do your three double crochets two and three we're not chaining in between anywhere we're just jumping from the corner into the space now you're jumping from this space into your next corner with your double cluster set of three two three one two and three chain one and two one two and three all right that is now officially your side one side of your work now there's that space before the corner again you do one cluster set in there of three double crochets one two and whoops <laughs> don't, don't miss a stitch and three all right easy i think it's easy jumping straight into there with a double cluster set i'll slow down sorry guys for the newbies who have joined us one two and three you can also um slow the recording down for yourselves by the way one two there's like a little settings bar up the top on your right hand corner you can slow the video down to suit you do your three double crochets my voice will sound a bit weird <laughs> but don't worry about that it's just to show you how to do the each each stitch if you slow it down all right now there's your space in between corners so you're just going to pop another three double crochets or one cluster set if you will one cluster set of three double crochets all right easy 
jumping into your very next corner with your corner cluster set or double cluster set okay three double crochets chain one and two and three double crochets all right almost there guys almost there all right now this is your last side all right now your last side will consist of just popping one cluster set in there of three double crochets because you've already started the corner on this side so all you're doing is your cluster set and then you're slip stitching in that nice easy slip stitch now that's a lot better than it was before i'm just guess, being very fiddly so let me try that properly <laughs> hello okay so much more space in there now don't leave it too loose because you don't want it too loose but you don't want it too tight where you can't put the hook in like i did before with the purple see there's a little bit of a gap there so you're pulling your loop through pulling it through giving it a cut because we're changing colors now if you weren't changing colors all you're doing is slip stitch into each of those stitches across and get into your corner and then do a normal corner set all right but we're changing colors so let's change the colors i might show you that slip stitch in the next round okay what is our next color but firstly look at that gorgeous i love 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 all righty now let's grab our next color which is uh, blue I love this color it's kind of like an aqua really it's not exactly a blue all right so let's move everything out the way it's getting a bit overcrowded here <laughs> a little bit overcrowded all right here we go now remember what i said when you start your round it's up to you but i always start from that very first corner before the thread so pop your hook in grabbing a loop and just pulling it through Passing your tail end forward. I've got too much tail. Look at that tail. <laughs> you want a long tail, but you don't want it that long. Yeah. All right. Now, this is going to be the fun row. Okay. Chain one, two, and three. And popping your stitch marker in there. Oops. Both loops. Try both loops, Mary. Not one. All right, now we're going to do your starting corner cluster set and one in there and you know how to do this so you do two double crochets because you've done this in every round now so you're experienced one and two and three double crochets just that first corner is a little different the rest of them are exactly the same okay and this row is going to be different again remember before we put that one cluster set in there here we've got two spaces on each side so you're going to have to put a cluster set there a cluster set there and then jump in there your corner with a double cluster set so this is your first side you're going to do three double crochets in that first set right there okay jumping straight into that next space now that space has a thread that i would like to crochet over so we're going to crochet over that thread one two and uh, three yes and now you're jumping into your corner with your corner set of three two three or double cluster set whatever you want to call it and uh, two and three double crochets two and three all right so now what you've got here is one side of this row you can you could have seen the square just in that first piece but now you can see the square so much clearer yeah how gorgeous does it look with the mixed colors all right and this is this where we are now is what you're going to repeat all the way around your work you're going to put your one cluster set in your first space one cluster set in your next
and you guessed it, one corner set of three, two, three. One, two, three, one and two, and one, two, three. And this round here, I'll show you how to slip stitch across. We are still changing our colors, but I just want to show those of you who didn't want to change your colors. I forgot all about that, guys, sorry. But we're trying to use all the colors, all four colors here. I'm sorry, jump into your next set. <laughs> I'm talking away here, forgetting what to do. Jump into there and jump into your next space with your next set. So we're going to use all four colors. So after this, we're going to start back with the gold, okay? Jump into your corner with your corner sets. I'm just rushing through this part here, guys, because I want to get you started. I think I know you know what you're doing, all right? Chain one and two. One, two, and three. This is the last side, guys. Jump into that first space there. Two, and three. Well, the last side for this row. <laughs> Don't get too excited. <laughs> you have a few more to go. All right, you're going to jump into that space right there with your last set. All righty. Two and three. All right, super easy. Now, see this stitch marker right here? We slip stitch to join. I think you're getting the picture about what you need to do for each row. Yeah, I think you get the picture. I'm going to explain it to you a bit better. But before we do, that's slip stitch. Let's pretend you didn't want to change colour. All right, let's just pretend. Take out your stitch marker. All right, you're here. We're going to change colour, so this is going to change. But let's pretend you didn't want to. So you slip stitch right into that very next stitch, like so. And pull a loop through, like so. Slip stitch a second time, like so. And pull it through. Then you slip stitch directly into the corner and you start chaining your one, two and three. Now that's only if you didn't want to change colours, but we are changing colours. All right, so let me just do that slip stitch for you again so you know where you are. I don't want to confuse anyone. All right, so we're going to slip stitch into our last stitch there, like so. Yes. Now we chain or pull up a loop, whatever you want to call it. Give it a cut. We're going to change back to the gold. How gorgeous does that look? I love, love, love. All right. Now, for the next few rounds, <laughs> get excited. I'm going to start you off and then you're going to head off and finish that round and then meet me back. All right. So there we go. This is where we ended off. Guess what? We're going to pop our next color in there, that corner there. And the next color is gold. So we're going straight back. From the very first color that we started with all right and there's one two and three you know how to do this part you've been doing it in every round all right yes but still i'll do a little bit with you Let's start you off and you're going to do two double crochets in there one and two they're saying what just a little bit mm -hmm. just a little bit <laughs> Now chain two, one and two, and three double crochets in the same space. All right, so the reason I've lifted that up is because I want to show you what we're going to do next. All right, whoops, bring that down. No, that didn't work. Let's try it again. Okay, so where we are here, okay, is like that. What you have now is before you had the one plus the set in there, then we had the two, and now we've got one, two, three spaces. So you're going to gain one in every side for every other row that we do. So what I want you to do for this round only, because it's probably better this way and you can, you know, we can all work together, so that we can check our measurements as we go. I would like for you to just start this round. So start it with your three double crochets, a one, 
two and three in that space right there jump into your second space with one two and three and we're jumping into the next space and I'm crocheting over that tail end again not necessary but I do it drop the tail one two and three. Oh my gosh, don't the blue and the gold look gorgeous together? What? <laughs> All right, now we're jumping into our next corner space with a double cluster set of your three, two, three. One and two. And three. One, two, and three. Okay. I'm going to pull up that loop. Why? Because you're not going to sit here and watch me do this round. What? <laughs> no. <laughs> I would like for you to put a cluster set there. Three, 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 two, three. Three, 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 two, three, 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 three. And wait for me there and I will meet you up in just a moment. Alrighty, guys. What you should have is this. Okay. You should have your three sets there and a corner three sets and a corner three corner three and now we're going to slip stitch to that corner so you need to have done your last cluster set in that space right there all right and now we're going to slip stitch <laughs> come on woman you get it right into that little stitch marker right there take your stitch marker out all right Pull a loop through like so. Pull it through to the loop on your hook. Oh, don't lose it. Pull up a loop. We're going to cut it yet again. Now remember, we've started a new round of colours. Okay, so we've got your gold, purple, white, blue, gold, purple. All right, so your next one is your purple. All right. Okay, if I can find the thread, we can start. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. Okay, now just grab your next corner or your first corner, whichever. If you turn around, you can actually see your threads all over the place. Okay, we are going to be weaving in these threads later as well. So there you go. But now let's just pull our little thread through, like so. Oh, that's a really small tail. Don't make them too small or you can't weave them in. All right, you need to have enough to weave in. Chaining one, two, and a three. Now, this is the purple, which was really hard to see before. And now it's going to be no difference because the sun's gone in. Of course it has. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to put two double crochets in that space there. Same space. Chain one and two. And three double crochets in that space notice how I'm still crocheting over the tail again again not necessary beautiful pass your little tail end at the back in fact I think that tail ends a little too small but that's okay all right and in this round what do you have one two three four sets so you have to put four sets of double crochets along there four along there four along there four along there and yep you've got to do your corners as well and you know how to do the corners but I'm going to start you off and we're going to jump straight into that first space with three double crochets one two and three now your square is starting to grow a little bit it's not exactly 20 centimeters or eight inches yet but it will be now that also depends on your um, tension what hook size you used and what kind of yarn you use or what type of yarn you used okay so just keep going and after this round we'll mess around with some measurements so you'll know exactly how many more rows you need to do I'm crocheting over that tail you could have done that earlier okay but it's okay we'll do it now after this round all right jump into your corner with your double cluster set and we're almost there guys which means you're going to head off on your own in a moment 
<laughs> yes, you are. They're going, no, don't leave us. <laughs> you know what you're doing. You really do. <laughs> I know you do. All right, here we go. One more in that corner. And there you go. All right. So now what you're going to do, see that? Like every other round, you're going to go one, two, three, four cluster sets along there. A corner cluster set. One, two, three, four in there. A corner. And then one, two, three, four. Get to that stage there and I'll meet you up in a moment. Alrighty guys, what we have here initially is a good size square. Now I asked you to stick around, uh, get to this size and we'll talk about measurements, which we're going to do right now, this very second. Okay, so grab your measuring tape, get from one side of your um, piece to the other. Now mine is roughly, let me get a nice close up for you, oh it's too close, sorry about that, is <laughs> roughly 16 centimetres or almost six, we'll say six and a quarter inches. Now I need that much more. And I know that if I was to do, because I want to finish off on a blue row. Now if I was to do the, the cream, which we're going to do next, and then the blue, I would it would be far too big. It would be like way into the nine inches or 23 centimeters. So what we're going to do is we are still going to do a cream row. And on the very last row, which will be the blue, it will be a smaller stitch which we're going to change all right but for now um, I would like to do the cream before you continue however if yours is let's say yours is there one more row will actually be plenty for you okay if yours is like there or say even there you're going to need to do a few more rows before you end it off so let's just start off by finishing off this row and continuing on with the cream all right so let's do that now all right so there's your stitch marker i'm assuming you would finish that last space there pop your hook oh, that wasn't too bad actually <laughs> in that stitch marker pull a loop through pull it through to the loop on your hook whoops should have taken that out first shouldn't i okay and from here again if you want to slip stitch across and get in that corner you can but yours truly is pulling up a loop grabbing the scissors and giving it a cut and there you go all right so that is where you should be at right now grab your next color mine is the cream okay right there pop your hook in grabbing your cream and doing exactly what we do in every round super duper easy for you now yeah chain one two and three grabbing your stitch marker popping it through the two loops of your cream like so i think i may have split that yarn but let's not worry about it until the end of the row and doing your two double crochets one and two. Oh, we're going to still go over that, aren't we? <laughs> Chain one and two, and three double crochets. Like you already knew that part, because you know the start. We only do two double crochets because the chains act as the first double crochet. Okay. Pass that tail at the end, and jumping into your spaces. Oh, we've got a few spaces along the way now, haven't we? So it's. It's relatively big now, so it's going to take us a little longer to complete each round. So you don't want to sit here watching me do, you know, 20,000 million cluster sets. I know there's not that many, but, you know, I just like to exaggerate a bit, <laughs> as you do. All right. So what you need to do is continue along in that manner, get to this spot right here, and we'll talk about the final part of measurements and what we're going to do next. All right. Go ahead and do that, and I'll meet you up here in a moment. Alrighty guys, this is where you should be. How gorgeous is this square looking? Grab your measuring tape. Okay, now this is the fun bit. Let's show you close up. Now mine measures just over 7 inches and 18 centimetres. But yours truly, for our blanket, needs that much more. Now there's no way um, to one row of double crochets are going to be there it'll go right over to 22 roughly into 22 so yours truly has decided for our square and you know what i've thought about it it does look nice too to pop a row of single crochets 
Now, with your single crochet row, you might find for you that's not big enough, pop a row of half doubles. If that's not big enough, pop a row of doubles and you're done. If yours is perfect right now, is 20 inches right now, I'm sorry, let's try 20 centimetres, 20 centimetres, 8 inches right now, then you're done. Okay, uh, cast off and weave in your ends, which I'll show you in a moment. But in the meantime, we're going to continue. Okay. All right, what we're going to do is slip stitch into that very first stitch like we've been doing all along. And that one was nice and tight for me, <laughs> as you do. Hopefully I didn't split a thread there. I don't think I did. So pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Cast off. Okay, cast off. Cut your work and grab your next colour. And also, guys, don't forget to um, pop over on our lives at 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoons and 10 a.m. Saturday mornings. That's Melbourne, Australia time. Every week we have a lot of fun. Uh, sometimes we talk about, most of the times, we talk about the projects that we are doing. All of the times, I should say, we talk about the projects that we are currently doing. Um, sometimes we talk about things we're going to do in the future. Sometimes we accidentally invent new things to make. That's my fault. <laughs> <laughs> as you do and sometimes we just you know be silly <laughs> as you do on the live okay now we are going to cast on again now again if yours is relatively small you need to do another row of doubles mine is only a little bit smaller than it's supposed to be so I'm going to do a row of single crochets in the blue okay and this is what you can do if you're doing single crochets so we are chaining one give that chain a really big tuck because that's going to be classified as nothing in this round okay and in the same space you're popping a single crochet and a single crochet is hook in the space pull up a loop two loops on your hook yarn over pull through two grab your stitch marker really important for this one because sometimes single crochet is hard to tell where the first stitch is and where the second stitch is. That's your first. All right. Just push it over a little bit. Pop in another single crochet. And again, that is hook in the center. Pull up a loop. Just tighten everything up a little bit. Two loops on your hook. Yarn over. Pull through two. Yes. Now we're going to chain two. One and two. In the same space, you're going to put, you can probably move it all over if you like, you're going to put in another two single crochets. So one and two. Right, notice how I'm tightening up that corner just that tiny bit because if it's too loose, it sticks out all over the place. And I'm still crocheting over my tail, again, not necessary. Now here you've got that stitch right in there. That is actually a stitch which is why we're only putting two in the corner, okay? We're gonna pop a single crochet in that stitch right there. You'll see the two loops, not just your next one there, but in the one close up to your stitches, right there, and I'm still crocheting over my tail. Single crochet right there. All right, gets a little bit better now along the sides. All right, across here, you're actually putting single crochets in every V stitch you come to. They look like little V stitches, don't they? They're not a V stitch, just they look like Vs. So single crochet in that stitch right there. Single in the next, there. And so on, all the way across the side. When you get to these little centers, you're just doing it in the stitch, not the center or anything. It's just literally in every little V looking stitch across okay easy yes almost there guys we are almost finished this swatch very exciting the swatch blanket I know I'm loving it so single crochet all the way across okay now you're getting up to that little thread right there single crochet there Okay, now honestly, yours truly literally passes that thread over. You don't have to, um, but I do, and does a single crochet on top of it. 
all right now here is your next stitch that really tight chain is your next stitch and you're doing a single crochet on there as well then you're doing it in your next stitch and again in your next stitch and guess what you're at the corner so you're going to put two 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 single crochets one and two chain two one and two and two single crochets one and two all right so let me show you what you've done right there how gorgeous does that look i mean simply divine i'm loving these colors together yes i am for those of you who don't know this and you're joining us new here firstly let's just pass this over like that there and pop your stitch in that first one so we don't forget what we're doing and then your stitch in your very next one and so on across so if you're joining us new and you're not sure what the color combinations are the color combinations were chosen by our subscribers okay on our lives which is why i tell you to head over to our lives check out some of our yarn behind me in the live and you will see those color combinations for the swatch blanket i am allowing the subscribers to help choose colors that we need for our swatches so it's all about you guys <laughs> it really is this is one project that you guys are actually helping me design the colors the patterns i have all you're doing is choosing colors so head over to our lives on wednesday afternoon at four saturday morning at 10 melbourne australia time and you can help choose those colors pretty exciting huh oh what pretty exciting all right we are at the end of this side right here for those newbies who are still going through catch up to us and when you get to this corner right here we hop into the corner like so single crochet one single crochet two chain one and two single crochet one and single crochet two and again we move everything over because we've got to get into that first stitch right there like so and across the way like so okay i'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do this i think you know what you're doing all right so single crochet to there do your two 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 single crochet here just get to the last cluster set here right here see right here that last stitch there in those last three stitches and wait for me there because we have to do some maneuvering in that corner as well all right go ahead and finish off that row and i'll meet you back here in a moment there you go guys how gorgeous is this looking i'm loving 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 i know but i love everything don't i <laughs> oh i do when it comes to crochet well not everything there are some things i don't like you'll come across those one day they haven't happened yet but you will <laughs> oh I'm sidetracked here we go one two three single crochets left all right so pop in your single crochet one two or if you've got two that's fine three this is a stitch before the corner make sure you get into that stitch all right now with your corner there's your single crochet stitch remember how i said before it could be hard to see if you didn't have that stitch marker in there you could accidentally go into your second stitch which will make that very tight okay i want you to go into that stitch marker right there oh well, pull that out there it's a little bit tight with the single crochets so i'll just take it out it'll be a lot easier to pull through just pulling your loop through like normal pull it through to the loop on your hook pull up a loop don't cut now the reason i say don't cut is because just give everything a little bit of a tug you know just tug it all into place there you go nice and flat the reason i said don't cut it is because yours may not match to 20 centimeters or eight inches it may be less all right look at that it's just made it i mean let me have a nice close up of that stitch so you're going to see right there how's that for just making it just you flatten it out there's the eight there's the 20. all right so it's literally literally just on 20 turning it around whoops <laughs> and it should be the same all the way around your square 
<laughs> in, out, in, out. But there you go. It should be the same. Now, if yours is like that, you need to take it undone. All right? A couple of rows undone. So that's what I'm saying. Don't cut. But if yours is like that, you need to take this single crochet row undone and add another row of double crochets in your blue. All right? So you just have to play with measurements. Okay? Now, if you're finding um, that... It's only a tiny little millimetre out, don't stress. That is fine, right? A couple of millimetres, very little, little minimal. Um, that's fine. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Oh, what are we doing? We're casting off. Yay, we're casting off. Get excited, guys. Woohoo. All right. So what we're going to do now is, you may have noticed that mine's looking a little bit neater and my ends have disappeared, okay? Because yours truly has been weaving them off air but i thought just quickly i would save a couple for you some of the tricky ones that you know may be a problem now very first uh, end we did right there all right so grab your you'll need your darning needle for this part right that very first end we did don't think just because we've crocheted over it that's it no you need to weave that end in we're here yeah so now what you're going to do is grab your needle and just keep going through the threads that way. Making sure you can't see your needle in front here, and you can't, right? And just keep going a little bit there. Don't pull too tightly because this is meant to have a little gap there. Okay, because we did five chains here. So keep going in the round. Whoops, that got caught on something. All right, there. And there. Right here, I would go start into that very next stitch, like so. Turn around the opposite direction. We're going to go the other way. Just hop into your next stitch and go around the other side. Oh, I'm forgetting to check the front. Don't forget to check the front, guys. I'm just so used to it. I know where I'm going with my stitches. But if you're new to crochet or even, you know, the avid crocheter should check the front always. Because occasionally I've come out. But look, there's no, no needle there. And I think that'll do, okay? We've crocheted over it once, we've sewn it in once on one side, we did a little U-turn and sewed it in the rest of the side as well. That's your corner one done. I'm sorry, that's your middle one done. Wake up, Mary. Let's do a quick corner one, okay? Making sure you find a needle to suit your thread because I had a lot of trouble with this needle last time. <laughs> All right, this is a corner section, okay? Oh, it's a bad one to do right next to that um, purple. But that's what you're doing. You are weaving it in. Make sure you can't see the needle in, your, in the front. You can't. This is just the back of the needle right there, so that you don't have to worry about. Right, like so. Now, I've pulled it through some of my threads, which is good. It means it's never going to come undone. Okay, and that's what you want. It's okay to go through the, th the thicknesses of your thread now i'm messing that up really badly okay there now check the front you can't see the needle you can see it there but that's a space it's okay oh now i've got really tight in there i think i'm going to stop after this because whoa that's really tight <laughs> well that's not coming undone even if i paid it to <laughs> well that doesn't make any sense does it <laughs> oh that's a bit silly all right now what i'm going to do I think that one there is just like the purple corner that we just did here. So just keep going in and out of there. I'm not going to show you that one. I will show you this one, however. All right. All right. So this, it's a lot easier with a single crochet. Well, no, it's not. But it's a lot easier to weave in. But it's difficult where you can accidentally see the thread. So just be wary of what you're doing here. I would split that little blue thread there and just weave into your very next single crochet. It's entirely up to you. You don't have to do it this way. Make sure you can't see your needle and you can't. Okay. You can see that needle. Take it undone because you, you don't want that there. Okay. Oh, nice tight stitching here. <laughs> this is not going to come undone. All right. Let's do it again, but we're going to go back into the opposite direction. Make sure you give it a good tug. And that thread has gone completely. Well, if you come back, it might be sticking out, all right? And you're going to find another section to go in, 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 and through. Just checking the front again. You can't see the thread, not at all. And just weaving that through there. I think that's plenty. 
okay the single crochet stitch is fairly tight anyway so it'll keep it locked into place now I'm gonna let you do that one on your own because that's just weaving backward and forward like we did with the other corner but this one here is the tricky one there are many ways you can do this you can leave that knot as it is and find a way to weave it in that way and there will be a little tiny knot or you can do what I'm about to do take the knot undone take that stitch undone all right that's your last single crochet yeah this is what a lot of people do I found this one I didn't like it very much but I'm, I'm giving it benefit of the doubt for a few few tutorials <laughs> just pulling the loop through now you're thinking oh, that's not finished that's gonna come undone it sure will so you need to finish it off grab your needle well that will come undone it's a tiny little knot it's not gonna help you know you really need to get in there and fix this stitch up now there are many ways I've done it already three different times uh, three different types I'm gonna do another type okay very similar to what I've done in the past but not I'm going to pass the needle instead of see that stitch where we normally put our hook in where we had our hook in before we're going to get the needle and pop it through the back of the stitch like that all right and pull it through like so yes then you're going to get your needle see that that stitch right there we're going to pop it in the back loop of that stitch so we're going to go down in there and what it's done is it's just given you a stitch like that all right just give it a tug we're going to go back into the stitch because yours truly does not like it I, I like it to be knotted really well and then we're going to go through both the loops like so and give it a tug you can see a little bit but you can't see the big knot that you saw on top it's a tiny little bit that will disappear as we spend in fact it's starting to disappear already all right now you get your little piece at the back and you do what you've been doing all along you're going to weave oh sorry <laughs> let's try that again you're going to find places to weave it in and I'm going to go through this stitching right here like so and weave it all in and before you pull that through check the front all right always check that you can't see the needle and you can't all right super duper done not easy <laughs> that's not easy that was not an easy thing to do right but it is done you're going to go back in the same direction or the opposite direction I should say making sure you give everything a tug and it's gone completely find a different section to weave into it's the same way but just in different stitches so you're not going through the same stitches and you're not unraveling all right no needle and I think that's done all right you don't need to do any more what you do need to do is give this guy a little bit of a cut stretch her in and there you go that my dears is done that is your swatch number eight and that is our granny square yay get excited look at those colors are they not gorgeous i think they are all right don't forget to join us not this thursday but next thursday for swatch number nine and that will be our solid granny square yay get excited on that one and we will be using the colors that you guys chose on saturday mornings live <laughs> all righty don't forget to like subscribe and share and do all those wonderful things that you guys already do for me we've in that final end and guess what guys ah <laughs> ciao for now catch you soon